Good morning and welcome to Dubrovnik, Croatia. Today we're going to be going on a city tour. We're going to take you around the city walls of Dubrovnik. What we did was we bought a Dubrovnik card for one day. They sell one day, three day and seven day tickets. And with this card you can get into several different museums in the old town. Plus you get a 24 hour bus ticket for the day and it includes walking around the walls. First stop of our day before we start our walking tour is going to be to have breakfast. If you want to enter the Old Town, you can enter through several different gates. The gate that we just entered through is called the Pila Gate, and it's on the northern side of the city. As soon as you enter from the Pila Gate, the first thing that you see immediately as you enter the city walls is the Jewish fountain. Dubrovnik got its fame for not only being a very cool city but it was also King's Landing in Game of Thrones and we're on the main street called Stradden and almost immediately it feels like I've been transported to King's Landing. A lot of the cafes and restaurants are located to either side of Stradden Street. This is the main uh, street when you're in the Dubrovnik Old Town. We decided on a place and just got our usual cafe latte with croissant. Pretty much anywhere you go in the old town of Dubrovnik has an outdoor terrace like this. So just pick a place, get some coffee, and enjoy the nice scenery. After the coffee, we realized we were literally 30 seconds away from our first Game of Thrones location. These are the Jesuit steps. And if you're not familiar with, this is where the High Spiral basically held Olena and it's where Cersei started her walk of shame. We're just walking in the narrow cobbled alleyways of Dubrovnik and this place is so beautiful. To get on the wall of Dubrovnik, there are a couple of entrances. We've actually had to come back to Pile Gate where we first entered, and this is one of the main entrances. We're starting the tour of the wall from the Pile Gate. To be able to walk the old walls, you do have to buy a ticket. So just to go into the old town, you don't need to buy a ticket. But for the walls, we brought the Dubrovnik card and you have to exchange it to get the tickets for the wall. The walls are just a one-time entry, so you can't start the wall, leave, and then come back. You have to do the complete route. And I think the route takes about maybe two hours. A piece of advice is to do what we did not do, and that is to come early in the morning. So the peak season or the summer season has started, and now there are going to be cruise ships coming every day. The walls will get busy really quickly. So make sure you're here in the morning. We're now on the outer side of the wall facing the sea. And from here you can just see how clear and beautiful the water is. People are out kayaking. It's just such a wonderful sight. So we have reached the southern end of the wall and behind us is Locrum Island. That too was another filming spot for Game of Thrones. It was Korth, right? It was Koth. Koth. As you're walking along the wall, if you get tired and need a little refreshment break, they have several different cafes along the way that you can stop at. about halfway done with the city walls and we've come from the seaside to now the port side. I honestly can't get enough of the views here. You have to go along the city walls. It's There's just no words for how cool this is. I do believe we have found the best lookout spot for the entire town of Dubrovnik. You get the best views of the orange tiles which Dubrovnik is known for. We've made it to the highest point of the Dubrovnik wall. Barely. <laughs> Barely. We're out of breath. This is called uh, Fort Manchetta, and if you are a Game of Thrones fan, this is where the dragons were recovered. So this is the House of the Undying. We have reached <laughs> the city floor. <laughs> 
So we heard that it takes about two hours. I think it took us about four hours to make our way around, but we did stop and take a lot of pictures and videos. Chit and chat. We, we have Chloe with us, so we took some water breaks. Chloe had to sign some autographs. <laughs> but the entire wall was a fantastic experience. You got absolutely amazing views of the sea, of the town, of the harbour and it's just something that you have to do. You do. It costs a lot to be able to walk around but it's definitely worth it. I think it's probably the must-do thing if you're in Dubrovnik. Moving on, we are now going to get something to eat because I feel like I'm going to pass out. After walking the walls, we have worked up quite the hunger so we are at Republic and we just got quesadillas and chicken burgers. After lunch and that incredibly long walk, I feel like gelato is an order. When you are here, you have to try a pepino gelato. It is the place to go and you can tell because the line stretches quite a long way back. I think we have waited nearly 10 minutes now, longer, and I have one foot in the door. We finally got our ice cream and I think it was well worth the wait. It was way worth the wait. I got lemon pie and it tastes, it reminds me of a Girl Scout cookie. I got the Ferro Rocher on the advice of the lady who is serving and I think I made the right choice. But the best thing of all is where we are sitting. So we just walked literally two minutes to the pier. This is the same pier that Jon Snow left uh, to go beyond the wall right at the end of the series. Right now we're in Luja Square. This is one of the main squares in the old town of Dubrovnik. And it has a clock tower, Orlando's Column, and St. Blaise Cathedral. So Orlando's Column, legend has it that Orlando was a knight who helped the Ragusan people defend themselves. Dubrovnik, before it was called Dubrovnik, was also called Ragusa. Behind me is Spanja Palace. It's from the 16th century, and right now it is the State Archives House. It's one of the only buildings in Dubrovnik with I think Rector's Palace that survived the 1660 earthquake. In Luja Square, you can find lots of different cafes and restaurants right along the side with great views of all of the sites of Old Dubrovnik. If you take a right, right when you get to the bell tower, then you will pass by Rector's Palace. So this is the palace right here to my left, and it is a 14th century palace. We were just walking down the street and we came to the Cathedral of Great Mary and we came at the right time because I think the service was just over and so everyone was coming out. One of the things that you definitely have to do while you're in Dubrovnik is go up to the top of Surge Mountain. They have a few ways that you can get up there. You can hike up there, you can take the cable car up there, or you can drive up there. So earlier in the week we drove our car up to the top. The views of Dubrovnik from the top are absolutely amazing. So if you go at sunset, that's the perfect time to go. They also have a restaurant up there, so if you're hungry, you can get a table have nice sunset views. Thank you so much for watching our Dubrovnik city tour vlog. We've got new videos coming out twice a week so hit that subscribe button and get your one-way ticket with us. Also don't forget to stay tuned for our next vlog where we visit Lokrom Island.